want to get all the way to the top and knock uh, Michael off, off, off number one. It, you know, that's in the future, but I believe I do have the game to one day, you know, be up there with, with, with the likes of Michael. Nathan, um, the Premier League is coming up. Yeah. Your first Premier League season. Next step in your career? Yeah, definitely. Um, something as a, as a young lad or starting out in darts, you want, you want to play in and to get this opportunity. You know, I'm thankful, and um, but a lot of it's down to myself. You know, I've worked hard over these last few years. Um, I've had a couple of good, good wins um, so far in my career. And yeah, definitely the next step uh, in the short career so far of Nathan Aspinall and I just can't wait to, to walk out next week and, uh, and make my debut in the Premier League. Yeah, when we look back there were a couple of players who, who had really problems with the Premier League. Stephen Bunting was one of them, Kim Heibrecht, Gerben Price in his first year. I mean on one hand it's this huge show you're playing in front of thousands of people, on the other hand it could be really difficult. Yeah, and I'm expecting it to be difficult. Um, you're playing the best players week in, week out. Um, there's no room for error. You've got to be at your, your A game, otherwise you're losing, simple as that. And I've spoke to n numerous people who have played in the Premier League and they've said, you know, it is tough. Uh, Mike Smith being one of them where you turn up every week and you're getting smashed. And it's trying to keep positive. Um, but I think I'm quite strong-minded, so... I can say it now because I've not been getting smashed, but um, I think I'll just relish every opportunity I get, every game, I'll just walk into it differently, even if I'm struggling. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to showing you know millions of people again uh, what Nathan's capable of, and hopefully I can have a good tournament. Yeah. Will the start be uh, important for you to, to, to these first two, three uh, yeah. days? Um, I, th I think, f personally, the first game probably one of the toughest I'm going to play, Big John, you know, I'm really good pals with John, we sit on the same table um, on Pro Tours and, and stuff like that, and obviously in Aberdeen, so I'm going to get a bit of stick, um, but that comes with, with the territory really, so um, I've got John, Rob and uh, Van Gogh in the first three games, so, you know, I'm getting thrown into it, shall we say, but, uh, you know, I can, I can beat these players, I've beaten them before, and hopefully I can get off to a good start uh, in the campaign. Yeah. Did you see the match of John uh, Anderson last year in Aberdeen against Michael? It was, like I said, I'm really good friends with him. So for me, watching it at home, like, my, uh, my airs and my arms were standing up. And, you know, it's, it's going to be a tough game. But even just to be in the atmosphere, just to hear it, and um, it, it's going to be amazing. And to be fair, it's going to be a great start to my Premier League campaign, playing in an atmosphere like that. When I say Nathan Aspinall was one of the players who had the, the biggest development in 2019, am I right? Yeah, um, I'll say he's right there. Um, I had the, the run last year to the, the semi-final. Um, that was kind of the kickstart of my career. Um, and obviously, yeah, the UK Open and the Masters win. So um, 2019 has been a, a fantastic year to me and it has kickstarted my career, but I don't want it to stop there. I'm currently number eight. You know, I want to get all the way to the top and knock uh, Michael off, off, off number one, it, you know, that's in the future, but I believe I do have the game to one day, you know, be up there w w with the likes of Michael. Yeah. How important was winning the UK Open in, in March uh, after reaching the semi-final at the Worlds? Was, was that this, this win which, which showed everybody else, okay, he sees really a guy who can win the major? Yeah, that was my, my target after, after the World Championships. He's, I've said it in many interviews before, so many people have good runs and then you never hear from him again. I didn't want to be that guy. Um, I wanted to back my performance up. And what better way to do that than, than win the first major of the year. Um, I played some good stuff in the UK Open. The final was pretty pants, <laughs> to be fair. Me and Rob were both tired, but um, yeah, to, to get a, a major win so early into my career, and especially after that, that run to the semi-final was, was massive for me. Yeah. Reaching the semi-final again this year at the Worlds, there was uh, the, the ex your expectations seemed to be very very high this year. You were you were always very exhausted after all these matches you played. <laughs> yeah, I Why? don't make it, I don't make it <laughs> easy for myself. Um, I feel go I was playing some really good darts going into the tournament, but my results wasn't there. Uh, Raymond beat me in the players. Didn't get through my group at the Grand Slam, first round in the uh, World Series finals. So even though I was playing good, I was losing and I'd not won a game for. I've got a good few events, so uh, I just wanted to get a bit more confidence back and 
every game I was playing, you know, even from the start, Danny Baggish, 1-0 down, Christoph game, he came back at me. I didn't have any easy games throughout the whole tournament. Um, so that it, it was just really important for me to back once again my performances up throughout the year to, to say once more, Nathan's not a one it wonder and I proved that again this year. Yeah. How difficult is it that suddenly in 2019 you were one of the big boys? Yeah. Everybody wants to, 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 to beat you, to, to be in a totally different position than the year before. How difficult is that? I think for me personally, that's been the, the one hard thing. Um, last year, I was a nobody. You know, I was going into the Worlds 500 to 1, UK Open, I think I was like 200 to 1. Um, whereas now I'm going in as like one of the favourites to win the tournament in such a, a short space of time. For me to register all that is quite hard, and obviously my profile has gone a lot bigger as well. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of getting there now, I'm still learning. Um, the game against Van Gogh in the Worlds was a massive learning curve for me. Didn't perform well, I know why. Um, so I say I'm still learning, but uh, I've got to realise myself that I am one of the top boys. And um, the sooner I can accept that in my head, um, I think I'll be fine. Yeah. When you're playing so many tournaments as you guys do, um, the time off is important as well to, to, to fill up the tank again. What did you do after the Worlds? Um, well, an older, um, for me, everyone practices and they say that they put all these hours in. I think family time is in just as important as spending four or five hours a day on a board. Um, didn't see my kids over Christmas because I'm away working, so um, took them to Lanzarote. They wanted Disneyland because I had another good run, but we settled in Lanzarote. Uh, we had a nice uh, week out there. Um, had a week off before we went to Lanzarote to see all my family because I've not seen them over Christmas. And then the last probably 10 days I've been back at work and back practicing and uh, yeah, I'm fully refreshed and uh, ready to, to kick the season off. Yeah. Is it actually right? You, you were, as a kid, you, you were a great goalkeeper? Yeah, yeah. Um, I played, uh, I was in the Manchester United Goalkeeping Academy. Really? Um, so I was there from probably about eight up until I think I got released when I was 14, maybe 15. That's, um, that's a step where you really come to the professional team, right? Or yeah, in well, that direction. It yeah. was, I never got to play for um, like the United Youth or anything like that because um, I was part of a goalkeeping academy where there was 10, 20 uh, keepers trying to get into the team. Um, I was just, just wasn't, well, I thought I was good enough, but they didn't think I was, I was quite there. Um, but, you know, it's something else I've done in my life. Um, I played semi-pro football. Um, for a club called Teal Town, which you know it's probably a couple of leagues lower than the conference football conference. So I played at a good standard, um, but football wasn't the career, and uh, I've ended up throwing darts at a board instead. <laughs> Are there abilities you need as a goalkeeper, uh, as as you have as, as as a darts player? Is it? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm quite per perhaps the pressure to 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 handle pressure, perhaps. Possibly, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm also quite a, a keen golfer, quite a good golfer. So maybe the Handicap? hand eye quad <laughs> nine. Oh, good. So I'm not bad. Okay. Um, I don't get to play as much anymore because I'm always away. But uh, I love my golf. So I think the hand eye coordination, you know, any kind of sport. I'm, I love tennis and stuff like that. So I'm quite a sporty person growing up. So I think the hand eye coordination probably helped me uh, kickstart off. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Thank you very Super. much. Cheers, mate.